Let's recap the Sun Devils press conference, getting ready to head into spring ball starting on Tuesday. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And thanks as always for making us your first listen of the day. Hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. And stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. This episode is brought a little later than I would like, but we are basically real quick, kind of rapid fire going through the the press conference that Kenny Dillingham had on Thursday, as well as some of the positional coaches I had the opportunity to talk to. I was able to speak with Sean Aguano, Brian Carrington, Rashad Samples, and offensive coordinator Marcus Arroyo, a really interesting tidbit about Arroyo as we get towards the end of the podcast. But we'll start with Kenny Dillingham because he's the head coach, obviously, and this is where we should be focusing all our attention is to what he says, all that good stuff. So he opens up the press conference and is very happy, very excited, saying, you know, uh, football's around the corner, it's football season. We're excited to get back to work. Some of the good news is Kenny feels that most of the guys should be 100% healthy. There's a lot of transfers that are coming in that he's very high on. Unfortunately, three players will be missing spring ball due to injuries. One of them is Jaden Rashada, who, of course, is the starting quarterback for the team, more than likely. He is going to be out for spring ball as he is recovering from a thumb surgery. Wide receiver Xavier Guillory is also out as he was dealing with a foot injury uh, that he received surgery on during the offseason. And Bram Walden is also out as well due to injury. I'm just not 100% sure what it is for him. So you will be without one of your wide receivers, one of your offensive linemen, and your number one quarterback. That's a bummer, but other than that, it sounds like everybody else is pretty much 100% good to go, which is you know great news for the Sun Devils, who really struggled to stay on the field last year because of the rampant amount of injuries that they ran into. So great news there. Now, there were a ton of transfers who came in uh, through the portal during the offseason, similar to the 2023 season, but there's a lot of very important players that are coming in, guys that look and appear to be plug-and-play starters. And three of the guys that Kenny highlighted could play major roles in spring and beyond. The three guys he highlighted are Sam Levitt, the quarterback from Michigan State, Cole Martin, the corner from Oregon, and Jacob Kongaika, the defensive lineman from Arizona. If you listen to this podcast, you know that I am very high on Cole Martin and on Jacob Kongaika, and I have talked before about how Sam Levitt was kind of in that same stratosphere of a recruit as Jaden Rashada was coming out last year as they were both four-star kids. So these are three guys that I don't feel should be a surprise to hear are standing out and to leave an early impact as you are coming to Arizona State and immediately showing your new head coach like, hey, I'm here to play ball and I'm here to support my guys and be the absolute best player I can be. I don't care that it's my first year. I'm going to show out. I'm going to I'm gonna make you... I'm going to make you very happy that you decided to take that chance on me and offer me an opportunity to transfer to your program. Sam Levitt, my goodness, does he have a massive opportunity in front of him? And it's something that we're going to have to talk a little extra about as well, because with Jaden Rashada out, there's a, there's a strong possibility that Sam Levitt exits spring ball as quarterback two. And the only one he would be behind is Rashada. I would not be surprised if during spring ball, you ended up seeing him and Trenton Borgay go back and forth between QB1 and QB2 snaps. 
Would also not be surprised if Sam Le- uh, Levitt ended up being the number one quarterback at the end of spring training or uh, spring ball, whatever, same thing. And then heads into training camp down in uh, July and August as potentially QB2. There is a huge, huge opportunity with Jaden Rashada out. Again, we're going to have to really explore that as we head into the the spring ball. Cole Martin, no surprise, another former four-star player, a Valley kid, somebody who was very good at Oregon and comes down to Arizona State where he's going to immediately slide into the void that Jordan Clark left when he opted to transfer to Notre Dame. Another big opportunity for Martin to come in and immediately solidify that void and immediately become not just a not just a plug and play starter, but potentially a a true veteran presence on the team and somebody who is going to be able to rally the defense because that was Jordan Clark last year. He might have been the vocal leader on the team, offense, defense, and otherwise. They need someone to step into that. That's not going to be easy. And I'm not saying Cole Martin has to be that, but who knows? Maybe he does. At the end of the day, though, he might walk out of spring ball at at worst as your top secondary player. Corner, nickel, safety, whatever. He might be that guy. Jacob Kongaika, big time Kongaika fan here. Uh, With the defensive tackle spot, you've got CJ Fight, who should be able to lock down one of the spots after a really good freshman year. Next to him, it's going to be wide open. You're going to have uh, several transfers in the portal. You got some young guys. You've got returning players as well. But Kangaika could very easily walk away as one of the biggest winners of spring ball. And he's already showing Kenny Dillingham a lot, whether that's academically, whether that's as a as a player or an individual, whatever it is that these three are showing and for Kongaika specifically here, it's going to go leaps and miles to really get him in that conversation of like, hey, this is this is D tackle one, or this is a starter along the defensive line. So those three standing out. Another guy he mentioned is Sean Naa as one of the um, guys who is embracing a leadership role at Arizona State. It was his first year last year, and for him to already be stepping into a role like that is unforeseen. Like you don't see a lot of guys that are just immediately able to take on a role like that. But lo and behold, here's Sean Naa. And he's taking on a leadership role in the weight room. And he's taking on a leadership role along the offensive line unit. Would not be surprised if he ends up seeing some significant snaps with first team during uh, spring ball. He's got a great opportunity to be the starting right tackle. Emmett Boley is returning from injury. He's He should have the inside track to, to get those first team reps, I would imagine. But Sean Na'a is going to give him hell. And he played well last year when he was healthy. If he is embracing the leadership role, sky's the limit. So here's hoping that he's going to be able to build upon that a little bit. One last thing that Dillingham mentioned that I feel is really noteworthy. We talked to him for like 35 minutes, so I'm not going to spew out everything for you. But the last thing that I really took notice about was Navi Bruzon, the preferred walk-on from Liberty, two-time Gatorade player of the year, national champion, all that good stuff. He is somebody that Kenny Dillingham has highlighted as expect to see a lot of this guy. Expect to see him on the field a lot and playing a lot and getting opportunities. They are hyping Navi Bruzon up. And I could not be more excited. He was somebody that I dedicated an episode to a while back about how he could be the face of the Activate the Valley movement that we've been pushing for the last year and a half. He might be the guy to really kind of show off like, hey, you stay home. You stay In the Valley, you go to Arizona State, you're always going to have an opportunity, whether you're a five-star or a preferred walk-on. You work your butt off, you're going to get a chance. That could be Navi Bruzon. They're hyping him up. They really like him. He's somebody that 
if you watch him play, like if you find his film on uh, uh, I, I Max Preps, is that it? I don't know. There, Google it, Navi Bruzon tape. There's, I want to say it's Max Preps, has like highlights and like tape, quote unquote, for you to take a look at. He's good at football. He's really good at football. Don't let the size deter you from watching a kid play the sport and show off how actually talented he is. Going to be a very interesting competition at the quarterback spot, especially with Jaden Rashada out. There's a lot to, to really process here with these three guys, Rashada, Guillory, Walden out. And again, this is going to be one of the biggest narratives of camp, but while we wait for that, I think it's a good time to transition over to some of the positional coaches that I got to talk to, some of the interesting things that they told me. We'll talk about those in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of our all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Michigan State Spartans can only be described as the Pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have created a lane for themselves by knocking off Mississippi State in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Many questions that they deserved to have a spot in a big dance, and they found themselves dancing into the second round. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on everything, no matter what, in the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, whatever. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet call troops until they cut down the nets. Appreciate you guys for tuning in wherever you get your podcast. Hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new shows. Let's round out our conversation now. Looking at some of the uh, assistant head coaches I was able to talk to. It was a very busy uh, opportunity. I was not able to speak with everyone I wanted to speak with. I really wanted to sit down with Brian Ward. The opportunity did not present itself, but I was able to talk to my usual suspects. I try to talk to Coach Iguana, Coach Samples, Coach Carrington every time. I was able to also get a word in with Marcus Arroyo, and that's where we'll tee this off. Marcus Arroyo, the incoming offensive coordinator, former head coach at UNLV. Very intrigued to see what this play calling looks like. Last year with Bo Baldwin, uh, it, it it just it got off to a very rough start. And Kenny Dillingham, after three games, said he's going to take over play calling, and him and Bo kind of worked together with it and were coexisting. But when Kenny Dillingham started putting his fingerprints on it, that's when you could tell that everything started to run a lot more smoothly. They were in more games and they were competitive and they were a little more fun to watch. Now you've got Marcus Arroyo coming in. You're kind of wondering what the role is going to look like, if it's going to be kind of the same thing as what we saw with Coach Baldwin and Coach Dillingham last year, or if Arroyo is going to kind of get the same opportunity to be the full-time play caller. Very intrigued to see how that ends up shaking out. But the one thing he said to me, that I find so beyond noteworthy is this. He mentioned that when you have a new offensive coordinator, when you have a new defensive coordinator that is coming in to a new job, what you more often or not see is they'll take the previous playbook and throw it away and present their playbook. So more often than not, you would have Bo Baldwin's playbook thrown out and replaced with Marcus Arroyo's playbook. What Arroyo said really caught me off guard and was very impressive and is something I've never heard before. 
Royo said he looked at Bo Baldwin's playbook and he looked at the language and he looked at the terminology and he looked at the way that Baldwin implemented his schemes. After that, he said he took his own playbook and rewrote the language, rewrote the way it is read, the way it is presented in the same way that Baldwin had his and implemented it. So he is still have having his own playbook. It's still his playbook, but instead of being written in his own way and forcing players to destroy what they previously knew, completely throw it out like SpongeBob in the episode where they only want him to, to know about good service and everything. And you see everything on fire because they can't remember his name. Instead of putting these kids in that situation where they're on high alert, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Arroyo made it so that it's read the same way. It's like the same language. It's the same layout, but it's his playbook. And that's going to make it such an easier transition in theory, at least for these kids to be able to say, Hey, this is, this is still the way that we read Bo Baldwin's scheme, but it's Marcus Royal's scheme. It's the same language. It's insane to me. I've never heard that before. If you guys have heard it, let me know. Cause I was blown away. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I got to sit down and talk with him. He was super nice. He was talking about uh, the guys he's really excited to work with and the plethora of weapons he has. He was talking about uh, the cool VR stuff that they have set up in the quarterback's room where they've got a big screen TV and little, uh, I don't know if it's the Apple ones, but you got the VR headset that you put on and the quarterbacks will simulate taking snaps. Really, really cool stuff. And he, he was just very impressive to me. Blew me away, very kind, uh, shook my hand, asked me for my name. Really cool, very excited about him. Now, the other three I got to talk to, Sean Aguano, Rashad Samples, Brian Carrington. Just some quick highlights for you. Sean Aguano said he is once again excited for the room. Relique Brown is somebody that he thinks is going to be a massive benefit to the offense, which shouldn't be a surprise given he's a former five-star player, depending on where you look. The thing that Aguano wants to see this year is not just Cameron Scadaboo catch the football, but all the guys catch the football. And he hyped up to Carlos Brooks and said, we think that he can still do a lot for us. And we saw some really good things from him last year. He said Relique Brown is a playmaker and a weapon. And he wants to get him the ball as a runner, not just as a receiver. Kyson Brown, somebody he's really excited about and someone that I've hyped up. He said wants to be able to get involved in the passing game as well and not just be a bruiser. Jason Brown, the incoming freshman, says he wants to kind of bring him along slowly, get him comfortable and eventually get him into kind of that three down territory. And that's what he emphasizes. He wants every single one of these guys to turn into three down backs. That's the development we want to see from them. According to Sean Aguano, Rashad samples, really excited about his guys. I asked him how he felt about the new additions and what I meant to ask. And I thought this was really funny uh, for myself. I, what I meant was tell me about, Jordan Tyson and Jake Smith coming back. And the way it came out was tell me about all the guys you added, which in reality, they only added Zachariah Samples. So really funny. Samples kind of gave me a funny work of, or Zachariah. Now I can't remember his last name. It's not Branch. Of course, I can't remember his last name. But Coach Samples gave me a funny look and I was like, ah, geez, I spit that out wrong. But really excited about, about, Jordan Tyson coming back. He hyped him a lot, hyped him up a lot. They talked about his competitiveness and that's something that we've really been wanting to see out of this Sun Devils team is the competitiveness from the, from the receivers room, from the safeties room, from the running backs room, all these places where you are just presumably very deep. You want to see that everybody is going to be pushing each other to the highest, uh, capabilities, something like that. Zachariah Sample. Okay. I wasn't crazy. I, I, I knew I wasn't crazy. Anyways, they want to see these guys get to the highest level. He said that 
Jordan Tyson is one of those guys. He also mentioned that Jordan Tyson just flat out looks like a potential leader in the locker room. He is really fast. He is really talented. Jake Smith, he said, you know, we were really bummed we didn't have Smith last year. We're really excited to have him back in the fold, and we have high expectations for him. Last guy I spoke with was Brian Carrington. Coach Carrington was glowing about the depth throughout the secondary. He loves the safeties. He loves all the outside corners. He mentioned the freshman, Tony Lewis and Cuba. He mentioned Chris Johnson Jr., someone that if you listen to this show, I am very high on. He talked about Plas Johnson, which I asked him. I said, hey, he was recruited as a receiver. He's listed as a DB on the website. Which is he? He said he's a defensive back. I said, will he play both ways? He said, not if I have anything to say about it. I want to hog him. So Plas Johnson is a, def- a defensive back until further notice. But he loves the safety depth. And he he loves the new guys that he's got in the room. And he he understood when he was asked, like, hey, what's your plan to replace Roe Torrance? And he said, we don't necessarily have a true replacement for a 6'3", 200-pound corner. But what we do have is a group of guys who are hungry, who are ready to prove themselves, and want to show off exactly why they were former highly recruited guys or players that deserved a starting opportunity, whether it was at Arizona State while they were getting developed, or maybe uh, transfers such as uh, LaTerrence Welsh, who was a former four-star guy, Kamari Wilson, a former four-star guy. He's excited for those guys to be able to step up. The last guy he mentioned and where I'm going to leave this podcast off he is incredibly ridiculously high on Keith Abney. Abney was someone that I mentioned previously. Abney really was able to get himself a little niche role last year with the team, especially towards the end of the season. And he had an interception off Ty Thompson and he kind of was all over the place. And Carrington is really excited to see him develop from year one to year two and play around with him and see where he's going to be fitting the best for the Sun Devils. So that's another guy to watch. Keith Abney, add him to your list of guys to pay attention to. You've got the standouts that Kenny mentioned, Sam Levitt, Cole Martin, Jacob Kangaika. He highlighted Sean Na'a as a leader on the offensive line. He highlighted Navi Bruzon as the preferred walk-on quarterback who's going to be playing a lot of snaps, according to Kenny Dillingham. We've been told to pay attention to Jordan Tyson. We've been told to pay attention to Kyson Brown. And we are being told to pay attention to Keith Abney. Those are the names that were brought to my attention. Those are the guys I was able to speak with. What are you guys going to be looking forward to? What do you want me to pay attention to? Let me know in the comments. You can hit me up on Twitter at RichieBrats36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils, wherever you're getting your episodes though. Hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And of course, for making us your first listen of the day. Appreciate you guys for sticking around. We're going to be back again tomorrow, probably talking about Sam Levitt. If not tomorrow, it will be on Monday. We've got training camp that is starting up on Tuesday. I will be able to go to the Tuesday and Thursday practice sessions, and I'll recap you guys on everything that I find out, everything I see. And otherwise, till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.